brakes or disc brakes? Few topics in cycling are more polarizing than that, which is why I'm going to do a series of tests where I pit the two braking systems head to head against each other to see if the performance of disc brakes really is that much better than rim in both wet and dry. These are the two bikes that I've got lined up for this comparative test. So we've got the Pinarello F12 rim brake version with Shimano Jura Ace uh, direct mount calipers on it and the newer Pinarello F with hydraulic disc brakes on it, also Shimano Jura Ace. Now in an ideal world, we probably have two F12s or two Pinarello Fs, but these are pretty close. I mean, they're very, very similar. And well, in, in an ideal world, we would have two of the same, but I hope you can appreciate that procurement of bikes, even for us at GCN, isn't that easy at the moment. It's very hard to get hold of bikes, group sets, pretty much anything. So this is going to have to do for the test. But the slight differences between the bikes should have a minimal impact compared to the difference made from the braking system, especially on the descent that we've got lined up. While Ollie is getting ready at the top on the summit of the Paso Jao, I've come down a few hundred meters from the summit to mark out the stopping zone. So basically, with our very fashionable pink GCM water bottles, he's going to basically stop here, or at least try and stop, and then with the other pink bottle, I'll mark out where he actually comes to a stationary stop. So as soon as he hits me, I'm gonna tell him to stop. Three, two, one, break! Now that was an emergency stop because you were going to go off the edge. That is quite some way. So from that, that pink water bottle. Yeah. Down to here. Yeah. That's some distance. That is some distance. I was going 53 kilometers an hour. And Wowzers. I mean, the, the, this road is really, really smooth. And that makes a difference. Like in the UK, I find stopping distances are shorter, but the roads are grippier. Like this is beautiful, smooth tarmac, but you slide along it more. So your stopping distance increases, less friction. Right, this brakes. Let me, let me swap your bikes. Here he comes. Are you ready? Three, two, one, break! We're shorter! Well, that's a pretty clear cut result. You're looking at about five or six meters difference from 53 kilometers an hour to a complete stop, which, well, I could make all the difference. I'm probably not the world's best emergency stopper, but uh, I guess it's indicative of what most cyclists would, would do in that situation. But, you know, well, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Next test. Test two is the descending test. So we've got a five kilometer stretch of this descent. I'm just gonna freewheel down it and use my brakes. There's gonna be no pedaling. That's just to try and make it as sort of fair as possible. And I'm just gonna look at the time difference between the two systems. There might not be one. I might be the same both times, but, Let's see what happens. Nailed it, five kilometers. You're already down here quicker than I expected, actually. Yeah, so I did it in 5.59. Yep. I, it felt good. I mean, it's felt, I mean, I'm not pushing it. We're on open roads, there's other cars. So I'm not taking risks, I'm not taking the full racing line. Just comfortable on the disc brakes. They're just so dependable. But let's see what the rims do. Right, there we have it, yeah, yeah. Can you give me a lift back up to the top, please? Oh, you can climb, mate. <laughs> yeah, you're a climber. It's five kilometers. Oh, yeah, get in the car, come on. I got you, I got you. <sighs> these, these cyclists. Round two. On the rim brake bike now, will it be faster? Will it be slower? I'm not entirely sure. So, uh, well, let's find out.
Oh, another quick one. How was that? That was 16 seconds slower. There you go, 16 seconds. Already, the disc brake has won out on the brake test. Yeah. And uh, I guess on that five kilometre loop, where we, well, well, five kilometre downhill, we must have done, how many hairpins you must have covered? 12, well, There's loads 15. of hairpins going down there. That was the thing, right? It's on the technical hairpins, and this descent has so many of them. That's the difference is, because I just could tell, having just done it back to back, I'm braking that, that much earlier yeah. on the rim brakes. You can get on the brakes so much later with the discs. Yeah. And also, because of that, on some of the hairpins, I didn't give myself enough braking distance with the rim brakes, and I got my line totally wrong. I messed up my line because I wasn't t getting enough speed off. But even if you're not racing, you know, and I'm not a pro, for the sort of, you know, the, the, the average normal rider who's just doing a uh, sportive or riding in the mountains or doing an event or whatever, they might not have, you know, descending skills like Vincenzo Nibali. It's probably, I think, going to make more difference to a rider like me yeah. or the average rider having disc brakes than, than the rims. But yeah, I definitely can't descend anywhere near as quick on these. Well, there you have it. Now time for the rain test. Well, yeah, hope we need to find a wet uh, descent now. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to be... I don't think it's going to be today, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice today. Yeah. Well, I found a, a wet descent. Great. It's uh, the Lago di Cancano climb in uh, the Italian Alps, and I'm using a five-kilometre section of it. It's got 17 hairpins, and yeah, it's looking like it's quite slippy. So, uh, well, same again. Rim brakes and disc brakes. I'm going to do disc brakes first. Oh, that's not bad. That's the emergency stop there. Nice to stop. Not too short a distance, that's okay. But I combined the emergency stop test with the long test because it's so wet, I'm so cold. I, don't want to, I just want to do it as quick as I can. So there you go. Right, rim brake time. So, well, about five meters further than on the other stop for the emergency stop, but on the, on the climb as a whole, coming down there on these, that's horrendous. It's awful. Like, we weren't able to film the whole thing just because the, the rain's so bad and it's going to damage the camera equipment, but oh, let's, go, let's go to a warm calf. I'm, I'm wet through. So I've managed to dry myself off and warm up and found the peace and serenity of a nice square uh, to go through the results. Now, the first thing to say is that on that wet descent, I was so much slower on rim brakes. Uh, it was 25 seconds slower on the five kilometre section than on the disc, which is blooming loads. And the big thing is that when you're descending in the wet on the rim brakes, especially when it's a carbon rim, metal rims would be a bit better. But the carbon rims, they have this thing of just the clearance of the water on the rim means that the first few seconds you pull the lever, nothing happens, and then it engages. It's very disconcerting. With more practice at descending in the wet, it's something you probably could get better at. And there's a few caveats as well that we need to point out, which is that the best descenders in the world, you know, the likes of Vincenzo Nibali or Tadej Pogacar, have used rim brakes and raced against people with disc brakes and they've kept up. But I'm not one of the world's best descenders and <laughs> I'm totally okay with that and I'm not afraid to admit it. And I find that for me, I think disc brakes make a much bigger difference than they perhaps might to uh, one of the world's best, such as Vincenzo Nibali. And we had to combine the emergency stop test in the wet with the longer descent test. Well, because the camera equipment was getting wet and damaged because the rain was so bad, as you can probably see on, on the film. But also I was probably getting hypothermia. It was, it was pretty grim. But 
as with the dry, stopping in the wet on rim brakes took about five meters longer than disc brakes from a speed of about 50 kilometers an hour. So I'm convinced that most riders are gonna be faster on descents with disc brakes over rim brakes. But what about the weight penalty of discs when you have to go up the hill that you've descended? Does the improved you know, performance on the descent offset that weight penalty? Well, we, we can model this mathematically and have a look. And if you take that same five kilometer climb with 17 hairpins that we descended, then for a system mass of 80 kilograms, an average power of 300 watts, it should take around 17 minutes, 30 seconds to complete. If you add on 500 grams of additional mass, then that, well, math says that that's gonna cost you about five seconds, which isn't much at all. And in my case, the disc brakes still come out on top. If I was doing an event like the Tour de Stations or a big Grand Fondo where there's pretty much as much climbing as there is descending, disc brakes is gonna be the faster option for me. But if you were doing a pure hill climb, or maybe just an event where there's significantly more ascent than descent, then rim brakes could be the faster option. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. And yeah, I don't have an agenda here. There's no conspiracy. I'm not trying to push disc brakes over rim brakes. I think both systems have their uses and advantages and disadvantages relative to each other. But let us know your thoughts and your experiences of using both rim and disc down in the comments section. And give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and share it with your friends if you've got any. I'm gonna have a beer now and um, enjoy myself. Bye.